Yes, you are still here on The Economy Today, and it is the interview segment. And today we are looking at Nigeria Economy Today. Uh, I'm sure you very know that the Nigeria Economy Today is actually on the downturn. Though there are uh, some people who are saying investment level is high now, you know, some people are making money even in this downturn, but generally people are really suffering and a lot of things are happening. Inflation is rising, a lot of things are happening. The unemployment rate is also at, on the rise. The level at which people are heading into the poverty circle is also on the rise. So I have with me today a data analyst, uh, somebody who knows how to give us uh, the real gist into that field. Uh, and will tell us the truth about what is actually happening and how the solutions can be proffered by the government. I have me, Mark Donald, and say you're welcome. Yes, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure being here. Yeah. So, uh, Mark Donald, uh, first of all, uh, you would agree with me that the Nigerian economy is, um, is tipsy topsy. It, it has been like tipsy topsy, tipsy topsy, and then all of it topsy, it tipped to a particular angle. And now we are heading towards where inflation is rising b between 23.8 or something percentage. That is if they are true with that uh, statistical 24, 24 to now 24, yeah, according you know, to according to the MBS, you yes. understand. And it is still going up. But I'm, I'm not even sure about that statistic because I see the poverty out there. People, okay, now let me use this analogy. If you look through our gutter, that's our waterway systems within Lagos. You find out that you don't see people throwing away remainder of food. Food, uh, you know, somebody just uh, ate remaining food and then threw it to the god. It doesn't happen anymore. Yes. There was a time you used to see loaf of bread swollen and you see fat, you know, rats everywhere. eating and every, everywhere. And they are, the gutter, rats are always running. You, you can just be walking and a rat as big as a cat runs past you and say, wow, God, what is this? But that seems not to be happening anymore. Why are we in that circle at the moment? Okay, thank you very much. Well, before I delve into that, for the sake of crystallization, let me take us a bit back on the economy itself. Mm. First, we should understand what the economy entails as a word. This refers to a regional state in terms of its production and consumption of goods and services, and also the supply of money. Now, if you want to know the state of the economy today, ask yourself, are we producing or are we consuming? Mm. Mm. What mm. is the nature of the supply of money? Because mm. in a nutshell, economy entails, it's, it's, it is a social domain that emphasizes on the practices of production, use, management of scarce resources. So <coughs> you, you should ask yourself, how are we managing our scarce resources? Now, once we throw all these questions on the table, you find out that Nigeria, even as a, product, as a producing country, what is the volume of our production in relation to our consumption? Is mm. it adequate? If it is not adequate, trust me, we will have this state we are in right now is the state we are going to be in. Mm. The unemployment percentage according to the National Bureau of Statistics, if I'm not mistaken, is 33%. Inflation is about 24.08%. Mm. Even as of June 2023, when the World Bank released its statement, it said about 89, it estimated 89.3 million Nigerians are living Be below the poverty, poverty line. line. As of the beginning of this year, January, but after the first quarter, it moved about 4 million Nigerians joined that. Mm. It became 93.8 as of me mm. this year, mm. statistically speaking. It's a public domain, so you can verify the accuracy of the information. So this, this boils down to the question of where did we go wrong or what is wrong? Generally, in the... Persian rule of finance, it states that the wealth of a state greatly depends on the welfare of its citizens. Great. True, true, true. Now, you ask yourself, the citizens, which class is the majority? You get to find out that it is the 
lower class, let me use that word if I may, the lower class, those, those, the, the minimum, the minimum wage earners, the minimum wage income earners, yes. Those are there, are there people who see, you say, minimum, minimum, or we have micro? No, <laughs> this is a state, so the official minimum wage as stated by the government mm. is what we use as a yardstick. Mm. There can be other minimum wages there and there, but the official one is what we use for the metrics. Now, um, you see, yes, yeah, you stated it so fine, uh, you know, and anybody could actually understand that, uh, you know, level. Nigeria is not, you said Nigeria seems, to, looks like a producing nation, you know, maybe because we, we, uh, we bring out crude oil. But again, the issue is that uh, we do not refine our crude oil. We don't sell finished products. And so sometimes uh, it's not even working. And then we have to now export it and then import back, uh, buying it and uh, uh, spending a lot of uh, dollar in that uh, process. So how can we do to revive our production appetite and reduce our consumption appetite i mean what is it that the nbs is saying because uh, i find nbs is just the ones who tell us the trouble they don't give us the solution yes well most times the solution lies with the people itself the nbs will give their metrics and statistics mm. they have the resources to run their investigations mm. but then it is left to us that is being affected the rulers and the ruled, it is left to them, us rather, to collectively fix the issue. Because according to the philosophy of social contracts, the, rule, the ruled gives up his rights to furthermore the protection of his rights by the rulers. What am I trying to say in a nutshell? Uh, because that is confusing. Yes. The citizens adhere to laws of the land so that the laws of the land will protect them. In a nutshell, we adhere to everything stated to us by the government so as to get protection, implementation of our human rights, and other necessary things the government can provide for the people. Uh -huh. Things like social amenities, water, those are their rights. So now, when we, when we come to Nigeria now, you look at the rulers and you look at the ruled. There is a long distance between them. In the sense that <coughs> Nigeria is about the last, the last census that was used because they said we are about 160 million. Mm -hmm. The 200 million is just approximation. There is no factual data about it. So, but let's approximate 200 million. When you take out 98 million people from 200 million, you have a hundred and just roughly 102. That if we are using 200 million, but we are not using 200 million. So now, if the major parts of the Nigerian population is living below the line of poverty. There is no way the system, the country, the economy rather, will be in a progressive state. All we'll have is the same inflation we are having, the unemployment we are having, the rising, the rising prices in commodities, food stuff here and there. Those living, from day to, those living daily from hand to mouth are finding it really hard to feed. Because most times they spend all their income on daily just to meet their daily needs. Thereby, you see there is no room for saving. I, I want to ask you a question now. Uh, someone once says that uh, both politics and the economy mix. You know, when you have politics, you always have the economy. When you have the economy, you also have politics because one moves one. So um, is it that we are wrong with our politics, you know, our policy? you know, trying to, you know, do political policies because I've had a lot of uh, policies uh, rigged out there by the federal government uh, to find a way to mitigate against uh, some of these things. Some of them sound so credibly nice in the ear, but uh, the implementation seems to be 
Listen, so where is the problem there? Where exactly is the problem? Well, politics and economy, they always go in the same sentence. You mm. can't separate them because it is about statesmanship, the states. Mm. Statesmanship. Yes. So, in my opinion, the government needs to immediately respond to the needs of the citizens. Now, how do I think they can do that? Place economic reforms. Now, let me go back to what you said. You said there are some policies that sound um, nice, but then it's not working. Sorry, I have Please. to stop you. Okay. I will have to stop you. We'll go for a very short break now because I've just been informed to go for this a short break and we'll be right back to continue with our guest. Welcome back. You are still on to the economy today. And uh, my guest was actually reeling out, out there what exactly the government should be doing when it concerns uh, yeah, trying to mitigate against uh, poverty, against uh, the issues in the economy. So you were saying? Yeah, I was saying they need to really, really place immediate and comprehensive policies that will favor the citizens. Now, how will you know it will favor the citizens? While placing in or implementing these policies, tailor it to those that are earning very low, very little. Those that, that cannot have savings. For instance, when you check back in the days, let me use back in the days, mm. you could actually have 200 naira and you would eat a plate of food. Even more. You can eat more. But now, you will have 1,000 naira. You can hardly get what you want to eat. Policies look good on paper. But if the inhabitants of a nation are not living, um, are finding it hard to get even the most basic thing, which is food, then trust me, that policy is not a good policy. So no. the government, the government really needs to even financial policies, before I forget, because the part of the supply of money, it is very essential. Any progressive country must have adequate supply of money. Here, sometimes there is scarcity of money. You go to the ATMs, sometimes seven banks, all on the same line, there is no money. The government really needs to checkmate all these things. The economy transcends beyond export of crude oil. We have mineral resources. We have the vast land for mechanized farming. If we're going through agriculture, the whole, the north, if I'm not mistaken with my metrics, we have over a thousand square kilometers of empty lands, fertile empty lands that could be used for, that could serious, be used for agriculture. serious agriculture and export the produce so really truly the government truly needs to take a look into the economy with immediate effects because there is hunger on the streets people so, are hungry so is it the insincerity of the government or is it just that uh, they feel oh it is not my i'm just barely there's nothing i can do well i can't say because I'm not in their mind and I am not in the government. If I was in the government, then I would know what is happening. So, but then, like kings of old, when a war is won, the king is glorified. When a war is lost, the king is asked. Mm. So naturally, that is the natural cause of things. Mm. Very philosophical. Now, um, uh, uh, let's go to one of the issues that arose or that actually prompted up uh, this whole issue of lack. Uh, you know, of uh, people, that's the removal of the subsidy. Mm -hmm. I've always argued. I said, okay, even the United States, even when I make this argument, people say, ah, do you know how long the United States has stayed and all those things, you know, they fought their wars, they've done a lot of things. But I said, 
if you check the statistics of food sale in the United States, it has barely changed from what it is from like 50 years ago to the present date. What they used to buy, maybe uh, 10 pence in the 1950s, is still 10 pence in 2023. How come we can't subsidize food? And that's because they are able to subsidize their food and they can allow their gas or their fuel continue to you know, rise or whatever because everybody knows that oh that one is energy and that if you have a car that's when you now power your car like someone also told me yesterday they said it is not that nigerians need fuel to power their it's not the cars that is the issue it is putting fuel in their generators to power their houses that if the government had instead of saying they are giving palliative had brought out uh, maybe say the the power sector stabilize it let there be electricity everywhere and then subsidize food there won't be any problem even with the removal of subsidy on a fuel so do you agree with this assertion or do you have any other decent towards it i totally agree with the assertion because i was about to drive in there uh -huh. so you see when it comes to food unlike every other sector agriculture is restricted to homeland Whatever is happening globally should mm. not affect you at home. Mm. For instance, there's, there's a global inflation right now. Yes. Globally, yes. there's inflation. We all know that. Mm. But inflation should not affect our feeding. Now, if I may, the subsidy removal is inevitable or was inevitable rather yes, it and is. it's it's better now it's it's better be now. the earlier the better in fact we should have no. done it lots and ago. for me i don't feel this removal of the subsidy was a problem yeah it was the 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 reaction the follow-up process normally they were supposed to be um policies that would serve as shock absorbers to help mitigate the hardship at least to give a smooth transition for it or if I may use that word, transition, in the sense that once you're no more subsidizing the fuel, which is mm. the federal government, mm. this is a big news, normally. It comes with a big effect, financial effect that is pocketeering. Definitely, they were supposed to ha have a plan, a cushion to, um, sorry, a plan to cushion the effect. But to the best of our knowledge, There was, there seems to be, anyway, maybe the plan is in action. Let me put it that way, there's plans in action. But whatever the case may be, the issue of food is not supposed to be affected <coughs> by the rising cost, even the, weak, the weakening of the Naira is not supposed to be affected by it. We have, our farmers are here. The government can even um, probably roll out some loans for farmers, farming loans, for instance. When you give um, farmers loans, state per state, for instance, these monies, there were some monies that were being shared per state. Uh -huh. If I'm not mistaken, I think five billion. The, uh, I heard a governor was talking about buying rice and all that. But then if you buy rice, Yes, it's a good thing, and you share rice. We'll cook the rice and eat the rice. Now, we've had it for breakfast. If it's much, we'll have it for lunch. If it's much, we'll have it for dinner. We've slept, and now it's morning again. What do we do? The five billion is gone. But if from the five billion, you give, you, you, you create what we call state farming, if you don't want to give farmers loan, no problem. Create state farming. There are a lot of acres of empty lands in almost every state, especially down to the north, even to the south, um, to the southeast, even part of the southwest, everywhere. Now, if each state, each state governor is responsible for producing a certain ton of grains, trust me, it will be enough to go around. At least we will mitigate the hunger while we are still working to grow. 
Uh, somebody would argue that, okay, now you use the word responsible enough. And uh, some persons would argue that, um, okay, most government offices, most government parasites has, uh, you know, operate ambiguous offices. A lot of staffs, a lot of just people who are just sitting around, people who are not doing anything. I mean, a job that one person can do, about uh, 50 people are actually signed up to do to that me. job. At the end of the day, a lot of money is gone into it because uh, um, a, a, a cousin of mine last year did tell me that, oh, she, who works in the federal government, with the federal government on agriculture said, oh, we have not even gotten our salary for the past three months. And, you know, uh, that the government is, seek, is looking for a loan to be able to pay, you know, the federal workers and all that. And I now started that most of the money collected for loans collected by the federal government were actually channeled to paying loans, pay, no, paying salaries, paying other the same, you know, buying vehicles for some people and everything. They were not meant for capital projects. They were not meant for anything tangible. So how do you think the government of the day, because they are just like a hundred days now in the office or so. So how do you think the government of the day can actually manage this? and do the right thing because they have an economic team and i think maybe what you say will be an a, a, a small advice to them yes yes well, what you said now actually falls under operational cost they need to cut down on operational cost mm, mm. it goes beyond um 10 people doing one work they need to cut down on the government operational costs both the vacations of officials but every the cost of running the government is i won't say is much or small because i don't know how to run a government i've never run a government but given that we are in a country or a state that is going through economic hardship in quotes for instance i'll use um during the pandemic as an example during the pandemic did anybody really travel Nobody, there was a global lockdown, so everybody, everybody was, everybody was at home, wherever they were. And nothing still happened. In the sense that what I'm trying to say is, the cost of vacations and other frivolities can be cut down. So as to make the common man feel that, yes, the leaders are also sharing in the hardship. Normally, we need to see some... Um, emotions per se, let me use that word, because between the rule and the rule, it is a relationship. So, it's a relationship. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for your time. I've just been told that our time is up, okay. and uh, that's the much we can take on the interview segment uh, at this time. I just want to thank uh, McDonald NZ for coming on board today. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right, uh, that's the much we can take on today's uh, interview segment and also on the program itself. I'm George Mwaduzi. I'll see you some other time.